Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. I'm here with Carrie Pickett, and we are going to be sharing the Word with you tonight, some really good things, things that God has really spoken to me, and I think it'll be a blessing to you, but we also want you to be a part of it, and you can actually send in your questions, and we've got meetings coming up, we've got all kinds of things, and I think we've got a giveaway tonight, so I'm going to let Carrie tell you about all of that. Yes. Well, welcome everybody to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. We're really excited. And I did not show up in my PJs tonight and I showed up on time. It's going to be an amazing... Now, people that weren't here last week are going to wonder, what is this I forgot this all about, about Live Bible Study. So he started it, he hosted it, he did amazing, he preached, and it was amazing. So, and she thank snuck you. in later in her PJs. <laughs> and she PJs was all on... covered, but it was just... PJ. So praise the Lord. So, hey, this is live. Amen. So welcome. For those of you that are first time joining us, you probably think we're crazy and we are. So I'm so glad you're going to be a part of this. Now we're going to do Bible study. Andrew's going to minister. And then we're going to take about 15 minutes of question and answers. And that's what is so special about live Bible study. So whatever uh, forum that you are watching on, go down to the chat section and send us your questions in. And towards the end, we're going to try to get to as many as possible. Also, one of the things that makes us interactive as far as Live Bible Study is all of our prayer ministers, 24 hours a day, seven days a week here at Andrew Womack Ministries, Karis Bible College. We have amazing prayer ministers that are ready to <laughs> minister the word, pray over you with power, and then also direct you to some powerful resources that I know that's going to change your life. So uh, one of the things that we do special on Tuesday Night Live Bible Study, because we do have Bible studies every day of the week, Monday and Fridays at 10, and uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays at 6 p.m., and Wednesday morning at 7. But on Tuesday night, we do something special where we have a free giveaway, and uh, you can uh, register for that by going to awmi.net slash uh, .net slash study. Blah, blah, blah. You can sign up for the Bible study notes. So when you do that, we do a drawing. And so this uh, grace, the power of the gospel, I'll tell you, it's one of the first books outside of spiritual body we translated in Russian. In so many of our foreign offices, this changes That's people's life. That's basically a summary of the first eight or nine chapters of Romans. Yeah. I remember we had a pastor from Siberia come in this radically changed his wife. He saw so much transformation in his wife. Then it changed him. His church of a thousand was radically transformed and he planted dozens of churches based off of this book. Oh, praise God. Yeah. So this is a powerful book. I'm going to encourage you, if you are maybe already getting the Bible study notes, you need to reach out to our prayer ministry. This would be a powerful book. So Grace, the Power of the Gospel, that's, so that's going to be our free giveaway. And then last week, uh, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. That also went to Ruby Reagan. So we're going to send that to you, um, Ruby. So also there's some amazing things happening at Karis Bible College I just want to make you aware of because we love having you participate in the things that God is doing here in the ministry. And one of the most amazing things, God with us. It is our Easter production that is happening April 7th and 8th. If you go to awmi.net slash events, you can order a ticket. Oh my gosh, it is so powerful. It is absolutely life-changing. And you know, I was involved in some of the filming of this. I mean, I wasn't in it, but I saw it. And they actually took over our internal parking yep. garage, built sets, put dirt in there. Five tons. And, <laughs> and made it a uh, scene, a Roman scene. And it is phenomenal what our people have done. Yep. And these Matter of fact, her husband <laughs> is the mean Roman guard. That, and, that flogs, scourges Jesus. Yeah. And also grabs... Uh, Mary, who is Elizabeth Murin, the woman who's playing that. And anyway, he wasn't grabbing her hard enough. She says, do it harder. And he grabbed, and I saw him. She had His bruises, bruises. <laughs> all over her arm. He feels so bad. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it is powerful because the present, the, the truth of the gospel and then presenting it so that people can hear it and see it and read it. So not just live Bible studies, I believe will change your life. I believe some of the amazing things we're doing here, especially with these productions, yeah. would change your life. And maybe there's people that need to see the gospel. And so I would encourage you to check this out and bring family and friends and neighbors. And so check that out, awmi.net slash events. And also our Chicago GTC, our Gospel Truth Conference,
Awards is April 13th through the 15th, and so we invite you to come to that. We're already having record numbers of people coming. There's so many people hungry. We would love to invite you to be a part of that. So if you know or in the Chicago area know someone, uh, let them know about this. You can register for that. Uh, again, awmi.net slash. And we've already, we were having a meeting about this today. We're already uh, possibly going to have to use an overflow room. Oh, yeah. So if you're coming to that, you need to come early because uh, we could pack the place out. Yeah, and we, you know, that the last GTCs in Orlando and Dallas and, man, there have been miracles and people getting set free. And so I'm just going to encourage you, uh, guys, there's some amazing things of the word being delivered. So. We are excited. So, what do you have for us tonight? All right, tonight I'm going to be I'm going to start in Proverbs chapter three. And Carrie, I want you to jump in. You know, some of you have heard Carrie. Lots of people have heard Carrie. But in case you haven't, she's got a powerful anointing and she's got a revelation of the Word. And so, this is going to be a joint Bible study. <laughs> so you feel free okay. to jump in. But I wanted to start in Proverbs chapter three. It says, "My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart." keep my commandments. I'm going to read a number of verses and then come back and comment on them because there's a lot of good things here. In verse 2 it says, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. And on and on it goes. Mm -hmm. Talks about honoring your uh, parents, or honoring the Lord, and uh, bringing the tithes and the first fruits and things like that. But there's a lot of things here I want to say, and I'm going to try and skip over some of it because I could spend a long time on each one of these. But in verse 2, it says, Length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. This is talking about the commandments of God. Did you know serving God is good for you physically? And That's this good. is one of my pet peeves that today we've got even Christians that have bought into the world system to such a degree that they relate their health nearly exclusively to diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, I had somebody give me some uh, um, beef jerky today and, on, and they just gave it to me. And anyway, a woman that came up and saw something, it was organic. And she says, oh, that's good that it's organic. And there are people that just obsess over all of this stuff. I eat nearly anything you can throw at me, and I guarantee <laughs> you, I'm healthier than any, nearly anybody you've ever known. I've had two colds in 55 years. I don't get sick. Now, I am not saying that you should go out and abuse yourself and eat junk food, but I am saying that people put such an importance on physical yeah. exercise and diet, which there's a place for that, but I believe it's about 10 or 20% of your health comes from those things. And just like this says, that following the Word of God will lengthen your days and produce long life and add peace to you. And you know, the scripture says, a merry heart does good like a medicine, honoring your father and mother. Those things are more important than what most people think. And there's people that wouldn't dare eat some processed food but you will swallow the lies and the deception of this world and not realize that that is polluting and hurting your body. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that because I could say a lot more, but I always want to get on to something else. You got anything to say about that? Well, you know, I, I think when you talk about this long life and peace, I think that's what the world absolutely is craving is they're just, they're pursuing so many things trying to find peace. Uh, and it's only found in the Word of God. It's only found in truth. Truth brings peace. And so I think that's when, when people are anxious and they're worried and they're in fear, the stress and all that stuff is because they don't have a, they have no foundation of truth and therefore they have no place to go to to lay their anxieties and their worries upon. Like, nope, I'm going to lay it on the Word. The Word and the truth it brings peace, and I'll just tell you, when people are stressed out and anxious, man, they just, it just mm -hmm. eats, it eats the years of their life. It That's literally right. changes their countenance. It's not healthy. It'll, it'll suppress your immune system. 
You get sick. I mean, you're sick because you're stressed out. Second weary. Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Him that has called you to glory and virtue. That's good. And so you get peace and grace multiplied, not through prayer, not through begging for it, not mm -hmm. through Amen. certain things. It's through the knowledge of God. That's awesome. So let me go on. In verse 3, it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. And again, this is something that I could spend a lot of time. I just want to skip over this, but real briefly, let me say that some people try and focus on mercy and they just want to be mercy motivated, but you cannot separate mercy from truth. If you do, you are going to let people take advantage of you and you're going to wind up hurting people if you don't share the truth with them. And this fits perfectly into our culture today because there's some people that don't, they don't want to offend any of these people that are drag queens and that are doing things and they, they just want to be merciful to them, but they will compromise the truth. Yeah. I just saw a thing where a drag queen went into a, a college in uh, North Carolina and was actually had a girl sitting in a chair and this male who was dressed like a woman actually sat on her lap and acted like he was having sex with her. Oh, no. And this was done and people think that that's okay. And let's not say anything. Let's just be merciful and kind. Man, you can't separate truth from mercy. This says mercy and truth forsake you not. And if yeah. you try and separate truth from mercy, from love, and you say, well, I'm just loving this person. You don't truly love a person if you don't tell them the truth. It's yeah, the truth good. that's going to set people free. And I think that's the thing that I remember you had said that. Um, I, it maybe was in class or at a, at a conference or something. I remember it just made such an imprint on my heart. He said, you said love does not set people free. That's right. Now here, I, I teach a lot on the love of God. So, you know, I'm talking about getting a revelation of God's love and then how God's love is supposed to demonstrate itself out of you with power and, and stuff. And you said, love does not set people free. He said, truth sets people free. And I was like, man, because and then that dynamic of, you know, if I really love somebody and I want them to experience God, I've got to introduce them to truth. Now, whether they receive it or not, that's, that's not our job. Sometimes we think that, well, they don't receive truth. Therefore, if they're not going to receive it, I'm not going to say it. Well, they're not going to receive it anyway. And so then you decide if people can handle truth. No, I'm telling you, you need to, you need to say truth because then you give them an opportunity to choose freedom. You don't freedom. have the right to make that choice for people. Amen. You know, if you were looking at me like this and we were talking and somebody was sneaking up behind you with an ax or something and they were going to kill you and I didn't want to say anything because if I told you, you you're didn't want to interrupt be frightened. Me. You didn't want to interrupt me. <laughs> You'd be frightened <laughs> if I told you. And so I just allow the person to come up and, and kill you. In a sense, that's what people are doing today, yeah. thinking, well, I just don't want to make a person feel bad. So let them go to hell yeah. because you don't want to disturb their belief system. Oh. That's weird. But here's, the, here's what I was really wanting to focus on tonight. In verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. And here what I, here's what I was thinking of. Over in Psalms, in chapter 45, it says, My heart, in verse 1, My heart is indicted in a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching my king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So put these verses together. It says you have to write these truths upon your heart. How do you write something upon your heart? Mm -hmm. This says your tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And here's what I was wanting to get at, that if you want the Word of God to literally be written upon your heart, you've got to start speaking it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and words will go deep down inside of you. And it's true that your words affect other people, but your words will affect you more than anybody else's words. And it's not only the spoken words, but it's your self-talk. It's the way you talk to yourself. Mm, you so need good. to start talking to yourself the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And this last week we had uh, Bill Johnson and Randy Clark here and they held an awakening Global Awakening Conference, and uh, they had one of their speakers was William Wood. And I tell you, I, I really liked William Wood. And I was listening to him, and his, uh, his experience with the Lord was very similar to mine. He had been in dope, he had been in jail and stuff, but I, here I was a Pharisee. I was living a relatively holy life. But both of us encountered the Lord 
in a miraculous way. And I was so full of unrighteousness and feeling unworthy that, man, I just, it was hard for me to accept that I was the righteousness of God. William was coming from a background where he had been in drugs and alcohol and all this kind of stuff, and he was having trouble. And this is, you know, uh, we lived in totally different states. We never had any contact with each other before this last weekend. And yet I heard him say that he was doing the exact same thing that God led me to do over 50 years ago. Yeah. And that was that when I saw truth, and yet it was so contrary to the way that I'd been taught that I was just struggling with it, I got in front of a mirror mm -hmm. and I looked myself eyeball to eyeball <laughs> and I got to preaching to myself and saying what the Word said and yep. speaking the words. And without knowing it, you know what I was doing? Mm -hmm. I was writing these truths on my heart. Yeah. And I tell you, this is what we've got to do. And there are many of us that know more of God's Word than what we're acting on. And part of it is, is because we hear something, we acknowledge it, we embrace it to a degree, but then our self-talk and also our conversation that we speak to other people is contrary to it. So you need to start using words to write the Word of God upon your heart. And I tell you, when there's something about when you speak God's Word, it comes out and it goes in your ear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And when you go to speaking the Word to yourself, it impacts you more than it does anybody else. Mm, that's good. Do you happen to remember the first time you ever heard yourself on recording? Oh my gosh, I thought I sounded like such a kid. I thought I felt, sounded nasally and I just, I, to the point I was like, I'm never going to listen to myself again. Did you know every person, when you first hear yourself recorded, you think, well, that's not me. Because see, you hear you yep. differently. You're hearing you with your inner ear that goes straight to your heart. When I hear Carrie from the outside, I'm hearing her with my outer ear, and it depends whether I open up and allow what she says yeah. to go down deep inside. But my point is, see, that when you hear you, you hear you differently than you hear me. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for you to hear me say these things, but you need to start taking it. And when you start speaking the Word of God, it actually impacts you in a greater way than what I can impact you. So this is one of the things I was really wanting to get across tonight, that you okay. need to not just make this Carrie's word or my word or somebody else's. You need to take this and you need to speak to yourself. And William was making these same points. I was so ex excited to hear. I'd never heard anybody else that did that. <laughs> I'm sure that other people have. But William was talking about, he even talked about he was preaching so hard and just proclaiming this stuff and he had a cat that came up and sat there and he said it acted like the cat was listening to him. So he just started preaching to this cat. <laughs> he said he got that cat saved so many times and that's where he <laughs> learned how to preach. If I can admit, I used to preach to my stuffed animals. So I was young, I was 10 years old and I would open up my Bible and I would line them up at the end of the bed and I would preach to them. That's awesome. <laughs> have you ever talked to yourself in a mirror? Uh, yeah, yeah I have. And you know, one of the things that I realized is how the enemy speaks temptation. The enemy doesn't come with this sinister voice that sounds all nasally and demonic and you're a loser and God can't use you. No, he doesn't talk that way. He actually uses your personal pronouns. I'm never going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. Why am I always making these mistakes? I'm never going to be anything more than what I am now. And because it sounds like you, you also allow the enemy to, you can write on your heart lies of the enemy mm -hmm. because it sounds like your voice. And it's like, and you can hear other people say, oh, you're never, and like, oh man, I'm just, I'm never going to be like, I'm never going to lose weight. I'm never going to be that. And you actually start speaking because you hear it with your own voice. You really do. And the positive side, that's the negative side of that. But the positive side is that God also speaks to you in your own voice. Amen. Because see, he doesn't say, Carrie, you, I want you to do this, but he communicates to your spirit in Amen. thoughts, in impressions. Yeah. And you get it and you think, I'm supposed to do that. And you think, if you Lord, aren't careful, you'll Lord, think, this is me. Could you use me like that? But you it's that? God that gave you that. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important that, you know, with 
with our mouth we make confession. We're confessing and that's why when we, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, but then we have this, it talks about our tongue is like the rudder on a mighty ship and it can steer you yeah. in the direction and you James and I are going to have, three. you and I have to change how we speak the word. So there's so many times I'll be on the way home and I'll just, you know, I'll just and I'm like, stop it. Knock it off, Carrie. You know better than this. You know how God sees you. And you know, stop being in pride. And I will, I will preach the word to myself. Knock it off. Who do you think you are? Like Some like, people that think you're crazy. <laughs> you're talking to yourself. Oh, I've had people look at me in cars being like this because sometimes I'll pray in tongue and I'm like, Shanda la basa no. I do and they look at me too. and they're like, what's going on? Who's I she yelling at? I do too, but nowadays everybody has these cars. I mean, they're... they're <laughs> Phone. microphone in the car or you're in your ear and so now they think you're talking to somebody on the phone so now I still look crazy because I'm better. shaking my hands and waving my fingers and <laughs> <laughs> but no it's it's true you have to be able to but you need to know what to speak over yourself and that's why it talks about getting truth because if you don't have truth to speak over yourself or you're just repeating someone else's words. And I'm not saying that pastors and ministers in this life Bible study can't be powerful statements in your life. But if you're just doing it because Andrew Womack said so, there's no faith because Andrew said it. It has to be truth that you yeah. get and then you speak it over and you establish it in your heart because you know it's the truth. You have to make it your own. And one of the ways you do it, just like we're saying, you write this upon your heart by speaking it and not parroting what somebody right. else said and just repeating it but mm -hmm. you speak it to yourself yeah. and then from yourself you're saying these things. And when you do, this is how you get established in the Word of God. Yeah. You have to constantly speak to yourself. You know, there's a scripture over in Matthew chapter 6 where it talks about don't take thought for, you know, what you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, what you're clothed with. And it talks about the lilies of the field. They don't toil about, you know, all of the birds of the air, God provides for them. And then it says in Matthew chapter 6, somewhere around verse 30, it says, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we sleep? And I admit I'm kind of taking this uh, and making an application out of it away from the main context. But I think it's a true statement to say that the way you take a thought is when you begin to speak it. So you can't keep Satan from putting thoughts in your mind, especially when we live in a fallen world and you're being bombarded with all kinds of unbelief and negative things. Yeah. You can't keep all thoughts from coming, but you can keep from taking those thoughts when you don't say them. It says, take no thought saying. A thought doesn't become yours until you begin to repeat it. And again, repeating it verbally is one thing, and that's the best way to do it, but even if you are taking those things and thinking on these thoughts and thinking those thoughts like Carrie was saying about, you're a failure, you'll never amount to anything. If you begin to think on that and speak those things to yourself, you're writing it upon mm. your heart. And so you don't need to take a thought saying. Kenneth Hagin used to say it this way. He said, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep him from building a nest in your hair <laughs> and, good. and living there. He's so good. And so it's the same thing. You can't keep all thoughts from coming because we live in a fallen world where we're constantly exposed to things, but you can keep them from being written on your heart because you don't say them. You don't take that thought saying. And when I have somebody say something negative to me, I guarantee you, I counter it verbally. Matter of fact, the scripture goes along with this is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, where it says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And then the very next phrase says, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Notice it talks about weapons and then it says every tongue that rises against you. Words are weapons. And when you hear somebody saying things like, you're a loser, it's not gonna work. Uh, it's flu season. You've got a terminal disease. Something's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. Right now, Carrie and I are believing for mega bucks <laughs> to be able to build out this campus and Amen. stuff. And there's people that'll say, you know, that'll never work. What are you believing for? And they may not just directly counter you, but they will say things that are contrary to what you're believing. Yeah. And you have to counter those things. Those are weapons. Mm -hmm. So you have to cast that down. Yeah. You know, people will come to me and say things like when I'm leaving, they'll say, take care. 
And the Bible says, take care, be careful for nothing. And so what I'll do is I'll say, for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a small thing. But if you can't be faithful in small things, you won't be faithful in big things. So you have to really watch words and recognize that when you are speaking to yourself or speaking from your heart, you're writing things on your heart. And you can get things written on your heart to such a degree that honestly, they, they just can't be erased. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that I do it. I, I take the Word of God and I speak to myself. Right. And I, and one of the things I love to do is when I am believing for something and I'm struggling against thoughts that are coming against me, I'll get up and preach on the exact thing mm -hmm. that I know I need. And I'm preaching to people, but I'm preaching to myself too. And then you find that the Holy Spirit starts saying things through, you know, like, that was for me. <laughs> Man, that was for me. Thank you, Lord. Do you know, I was watching one of my television programs one time. I, this has been a while back, but anyway, I was watching one of my television programs and right in the middle of the television program, I stopped and I said, now this is for somebody who's watching this. And it was me. <laughs> I prophesied to myself like a year or two later, and what I was saying was exactly for me. And I thought, that, awesome. that is strange. Man, that, uh, you know, and when I think about the word, and this is why it's so important, you know, Paul talks, and I was, I was trying to find the scripture. I don't have my preaching Bible with me, so I can't find it. But the scripture that talks about when Paul says that we are living epistles. Mm -hmm. and that Written. the Spirit of God is writing on us and that we're read by all men. It's not just what we are allowing to be written on our hearts by either the enemy or by, the, by, by God, but that's part of the testimony by, by allowing and speaking to our hearts and declaring the Word of God and confessing the life of God. That's what people are reading. Like you actually become a living epistle that is read by people around you because they're seeing the promises, the life, the word, the truth. It's not just something that you internally are doing privately. Now it's starting to have this reflection and demonstration to people and they see it. That's and powerful. You know, Carrie and a number of my employees have told me, I, they'll talk about somebody and I said, well, they've never said that to me. And Carrie has often said, people say things to you that they don't say to anybody else. In other words, they know that I'm going to jump in the middle of them if they start speaking something negative. So one mm -hmm. of the things I tell people is, how would you talk if I was with you? Would you be thinking this way? Would you be talking this way if I was there and you knew that somebody was going to hold you accountable? Man, yeah. how much more should you be aware of the Holy Spirit being with you 24 hours a day and you don't really have the freedom mm -hmm. to just verbalize and speak your doubt and unbelief. Uh, David said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. And this is the way it ought to be. We ought to not only, uh, when people are around that we know are going to be judging the words that we say, but you need to judge your words more than anybody else does. And you need to watch what you say because when you speak it, you're writing these things on your heart. Yeah. So um, let me ask um, if I can ask a question. Are you on the board? I'm not on the board, but well, this, is go, I'll go ahead. this is a question that I think is really key. It would be good to address. What about when, um, when when people speak things over you, what is the right way to counter it? Is it just like, I bind your words, I bind you, I cast you, you're of the devil? Or is those things just where you're privately saying, no, heart, I don't receive it? Because sometimes there's just, it can even be the news, you know? Like, how do you counter and guard Well, your if heart? it's the news and there's no way that they're going to hear what I say, then it's just totally up to me to reject that thing. So, man, if it's the news, right, I'll talk right back to it. <laughs> And I said, I rebuke that. I refuse to receive that. There is no such thing as flu season in the Bible. So I'll, I'll be real bold and outward. But when it's a person, you have to understand sometimes people say things that's not malicious at They're all. They're just ignorant. That's just the way that they've been raised. Yeah, and so you true. treat that differently. But if somebody comes at, you know, it's like this. If, if I just touch Carrie like that, she doesn't even have to respond to that because that's not going to do anything to her. But if I was to run and hit her with my full strength to keep from falling down, she's going to have to hit me with equal strength. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that I kind of look at things. If a person says something to me that really isn't malicious and it's just a minor thing like, you know, take care and they don't mean anything by it, I might make a joke out of it, but I will counter it. But if they come against me and try and push something over on me, 
Yeah. Well, then I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit back with equal force. And I've learned this, that if I, because I don't want to offend somebody and I just kind of smile and don't say anything and then I go home, by the time I get by myself 20 minutes, an hour later, that Her. seed is already beginning to sprout. Yeah. But if when I hear unbelief, I'll counter it right then. It yeah. just stops it. You know, I had an employee just uh, yesterday, I was walking around and saying hi, and anyway, they handed me this little drink and they said, you need to drink this instead of your diet Mountain Dew, which I'm not promoting that I do everything right. <laughs> but nonetheless, they were in, without doing it, they were polite, they were nice, but in a way they were saying, you need to change and it, you need to respond to this. And you know what? I just said, no, thank you. And they said, well, at least take it. And I said, no, thank you. And, I, and I, the way I looked at it is mm -hmm. that if they are going to be pushy with me, I'm going to be pushy mm -hmm. back with them. <laughs> I wasn't rude to them. They weren't rude to me, but I countered it with the same uh, force that they were trying to force something yeah. on me. And I think that's, that's the art because I think sometimes we don't speak up truth because we're just kind of just like, well, whatever, let's let people will be people. And because of that, they never hear truth come out of us. And so we're wondering like, why aren't people receiving? Well, you're not speaking truth. You they know, don't Carrie, see a difference. Carrie was over at my house last night. We were talking about a lot of things, but one of the things we talked about is that we have to speak the truth. And yeah. Carrie was saying something about they never have to wonder what I think. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes that's so good, true. sometimes it's not good. But anyway, people don't have to read between the lines. I'm going to tell you what I think. That's so good. Well, and I, I just, I want to encourage people, you know, like some people are like, well, how do I make this change? I've for years allowed people to speak over me. For years, I've just believed things and spoken it even about myself. Well, that's what's awesome about repentance. You just turn and say, okay, well, I'm going to stop doing that. And Lord, this message was for me tonight, and what do you want to say? And if you'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, He can give you creative ways of doing this. I remember one time playing basketball with a group of guys, and you know, we were just at a public place, and so there were these guys came up that we didn't know, and they were just using profanity. Every time they missed mm. a basket, they were blaspheming God. And man, I didn't like it, but instead of rebuking them and saying, you're of the devil or God's going to get you or yeah. something, what I did, I'd shoot the basket and if I'd missed, I'd go, hallelujah, praise God. And these people just looked at me and I said, you praise your God, I praise my God. And I made a joke out of it and they laughed. And did you know the rest of the game, they'd do something and they'd go, Hallelujah, and I'd go hallelujah, and we <laughs> we made fun out of it, but it stopped the situation and it yeah. stopped all that profanity. So you don't always have to attack people yeah. in order to make your point. I think it's part of the, the, the teacher as the Holy Spirit. He leads you and guides you into truth and understanding, not just the truth and understanding you need to stand in and stand up for, but then how to speak it in truth and with understanding of where they came from and, and how to say different things. So, well, we have some amazing questions here, if we can jump into that. So, um, Diane on Facebook says, you talk about truth. I got quiet about God and healing because I've been sick for so many years. I know Jesus provided my healing, but it doesn't manifest. So I quit church. My testimony is awful. Can I ever go back to church? So she just got quiet about God. And well, it depends on the church that you're talking about. There's some churches that you don't need to go back to. Mm -hmm. And there's some churches That's that good. just condemn you and make you worse than you were. But if it's a good church, you need to humble yourself and you need to go back. And, and Diane, I, I dealt with this same thing. I had basically been healthy my whole life and never had any problems. And when I got turned on to the Lord, healing is one of the first things I saw. And I started a series in a Bible, school, Bible study on healing. And I hadn't been sick for years. And when I started teaching on healing, I was sick for six weeks. I had something wrong with me all of the time. And I started to stop saying, well, I can't preach this because I'm not living it. Mm. And the Lord just spoke to me and He says, are you going to preach it because it's the truth or because you can see it in your life. Well, now, ultimately, you need to get your experience to where it matches up with what you're saying. But uh, the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10 that once you're enlightened, you endure a great fight of afflictions. 
AND SO ONCE THE TRUTH COMES TO YOU, SATAN KNOWS THAT YOU'RE YOUR WEAKEST WHEN YOU'RE YOUNG IN IT, AND HE WILL THROW EVERYTHING HE'S GOT PLANNED AT YOU FOR FIVE OR TEN YEARS TRYING TO GET YOU TO BACK UP. AND IF YOU'LL JUST PERSEVERE THROUGH THAT, THEN EVENTUALLY YOU WILL BREAK FREE. AND SO THAT'S WHAT I DID. I DECIDED I'M GOING TO PREACH THIS WHETHER I CAN SEE IT IN MY LIFE OR NOT BECAUSE IT'S THE TRUTH. AND WHEN I MADE THAT DECISION, I, I SAW THINGS TURN AROUND. AND I'VE WALKED IN SUPERNATURAL HEALTH. SO um, AGAIN, I DON'T KNOW YOUR TOTAL SITUATION, BUT uh, YOU DON'T NEED TO WAIT UNTIL YOU'VE GOT EVERYTHING MANIFEST IN YOUR BODY BEFORE YOU STAND FOR THE TRUTH. Yeah. YOU KNOW, THAT'S ONE OF THE THINGS THAT THE DEVIL THROWS AT US WHEN YOU'RE SITTING THERE AND TELLING SOMEBODY THAT, MAN, YOU SHOULDN'T BE DOING THIS TO CHILDREN AND TRYING TO GET THEM TO TRANSITION. YOU SHOULDN'T BE A HOMOSEXUAL. YOU SHOULDN'T BE THIS. AND THEY SAY, WELL, YOU'VE GOT THINGS WRONG IN YOUR LIFE, AND SO ARE YOU GOING TO WAIT UNTIL YOU'RE PERFECT BEFORE YOU EVER STAND UP FOR TRUTH? No. YOU'LL NEVER STAND UP FOR TRUTH IF YOU DO THAT. YOU, you GOT TO STAND THE TRUTH. AND IF YOU'RE WRONG, HUMBLE YOURSELF AND ADMIT IT. AND IF IT'S A GODLY CHURCH, THEY WILL APPRECIATE YOU HUMBLING YOURSELF. YEAH, THAT'S GOOD. SO LEAH GRIFFITH ON CHAT SAYS, I KNOW WE CAN'T ACCEPT THE TRUTH FOR SOMEONE ELSE, SO WHAT CAN WE DO AND HOW DO WE HANDLE DIFFICULT AND HURTING PEOPLE THAT MAY NOT WANT TO HEAR THE TRUTH? WELL, this goes, YOU SAID IT EARLIER, BUT YOU CAN'T REJECT THE TRUTH FOR A PERSON. SO IF YOU KNOW THAT A PERSON NEEDS TO HEAR THIS AND THAT THIS IS NOT, THEY AREN'T OPERATING IN THIS TRUTH, AND YOU KNOW WHAT COULD HELP THEM, BUT YOU SAY, I'M NOT GOING TO SHARE IT BECAUSE THEY MIGHT REJECT ME OR THEY MIGHT DO SOMETHING. WELL, THEN IN A SENSE, WHAT YOU DID WAS REJECT IT FOR THEM. AND BOY, GOD JUST SPOKE TO ME THAT THAT IS TERRIBLE FOR YOU TO REJECT THE TRUTH FOR ANOTHER PERSON AND NOT EVEN GIVE THEM THE OPPORTUNITY. SO I WOULD TELL A PERSON THE TRUTH. AND AGAIN, IF YOU PERCEIVE THAT THEY AREN'T GOING TO RECEIVE IT, AND THEN THERE'S GOING TO BE A NEGATIVE REACTION. YOU MAY NOT HIT THEM WITH BOTH BARRELS, mm -hmm. <laughs> BUT YOU OPEN UP AND START SHARING THE TRUTH WITH THEM. AND IF THEY WILL RECEIVE, WELL, THEN YOU SHARE MORE AND YOU OPEN UP AND GET STRONGER WITH IT. BUT IF THEY REJECT IT, WELL, THEN YOU LET THEM REJECT IT. BUT YOU DON'T REJECT THE TRUTH FOR THEM. YEAH, THAT'S GOOD. SO ANOTHER QUESTION HERE. Um, BY SPEAKING THE WORD, you said, BY SPEAKING THE WORD OVER YOURSELF, YOU WRITE IT ON YOUR HEART. SO DOES THIS APPLY THAT I CAN WRITE THE WORD ON ANOTHER'S HEART? FOR EXAMPLE, SPEAKING THE WORD OVER MY CHILDREN. CAN I WRITE, CAN THIS, CAN I WRITE THE WORD OF GOD ON MY CHILDREN'S HEART? YES, IF THEY'RE OPEN AND IF THEY RECEIVE IT. Mm -hmm. I COULD SAY THIS, THAT, YOU KNOW, uh, YOU CAME TO SCHOOL, I SPOKE, AND SOME OF THE THINGS THAT I SPOKE HAVE BEEN WRITTEN ON YOUR HEART, BUT IT'S BECAUSE YOU RECEIVED IT AND EMBRACED IT, AND THEN YOU CONFIRMED IT yeah, uh, BY SPEAKING IT YOURSELF. SO you, YOU DON'T HAVE AS MUCH INFLUENCE OVER ANOTHER PERSON AS THEY DO OVER THEMSELVES, mm -hmm. BUT YOU CAN DEFINITELY INFLUENCE PEOPLE, AND YOUR CHILDREN, MAN, THEY ARE JUST LIKE A BLANK SLATE. Oh, yeah. AND WHEN YOU GO TO SPEAKING THINGS OVER THEM, THAT'S AWESOME. I WAS TALKING TO COLIN AND APRIL CARR TODAY. I DON'T mm -hmm. KNOW IF YOU WERE STANDING THERE WHEN WE SAID THAT, BUT THEY WERE TALKING ABOUT HOW THEIR KIDS WERE JUST SO STRONG IN THE WORD AT 14 AND I THINK 11 OR 12, mm -hmm. SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND THEY ARE SPEAKING THE WORD. AND THEY CAME TO A CONFERENCE THIS LAST WEEK WHERE THERE WERE SONGS BEING SUNG ABOUT ASKING GOD TO COME. AND THEY IMMEDIATELY SAID, WELL, HE'S ALREADY HERE. Mm -hmm. WE'RE ASKING FOR THE GLORY OF GOD. AND THEY SAID, JESUS IS THE GLORY OF GOD. AND THESE KIDS WERE... THEY HAD WRITTEN THE WORD ON THEIR HEARTS SO THAT THEY yeah. COULD DISCERN THE PROPER WAY TO DO THINGS. THAT'S GOOD. THAT'S yeah. GOOD. OKAY, SO ZOE ON CHAT ASKS THIS, WHEN YOU SPEAK GOD'S WORD IN A DIFFICULT SITUATION, uh, FOR EXAMPLE, SPEAKING IN AUTHORITY TO A TORNADO NOT TO COME NEAR YOU, ALTHOUGH THERE IS FEAR AND TREMBLING, IS THERE POWER IN THE WORD ALTHOUGH MY MIND IS NOT QUITE PROCESSING IT? WELL, I'D SAY YES, BUT THE MORE YOU BELIEVE IT, WITH ALL OF YOUR HEART, THE GREATER RESULTS YOU'LL GET. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE TALKS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 4 ABOUT ABRAHAM WHO WAS FULLY PERSUADED. YEAH. AND HE REFUSED TO CONSIDER HIMSELF AND THINGS LIKE THIS. Mm -hmm. AND SO, YES, THERE IS BENEFIT TO YOU SPEAKING THE WORD, EVEN IF YOU'RE DOING IT IN FEAR AND TREMBLING, BECAUSE, AGAIN, YOU WILL HEAR THE WORD AND, that, and FAITH WILL COME BY HEARING AND YOU'LL BUILD YOURSELF UP AND YOU WILL DECREASE THE FEAR AS YOU SPEAK THE WORD. YOU'RE GOING TO BE THINKING SOMETHING. AND IF YOU AREN'T SPEAKING THE WORD, WELL, THEN YOU'RE GOING TO BE THINKING FEAR AND UNBELIEF. SO THERE'S BENEFIT EVEN IF YOU ARE IN FEAR, BUT IT'S NOT GOING TO H
me in the way that I speak to me and then the way I minister to others is that um, it's not, you know, again, you putting the word in, but I think this is the thing with meditation. And I do, a, I mean, I think that is such a key that most people in the body of Christ, don't, they don't know how to meditate, to take the things, thoughts and ways of God and think upon them and pull the, and it's not just like I read my three chapters and I'm done. It's meditation. Now, how do I take this into my day? How do I take this into my marriage? Lord, when you said this, what does this mean? Okay, if it means to write it, speak it. So what am I speaking to myself? And Holy Spirit, would you show me throughout the day today? What you're doing is you're inviting the word of God as an activity of continual thought. Mm -hmm. And then as you're talking to the Holy Spirit about and he's talking to you, you begin speaking over yourself. It just becomes this lifestyle of being in the word all day yeah. long. Yep. And I think that is a key that most people I don't agree. know. I agree, that's way underrated. Mm -hmm. I think it's for me, it was the key. It was the key, the key as far as being on the mission field. I teach on different ways of being in the word, you know, systematic study, word study, uh, topical study and different things. But then I also teach on meditation as yeah. being study. And I say that's where I get most of my revelation yep. from is through meditation. I, it's a huge part of when I teach on lifestyle of intimacy. How do you build an intimate relationship with God? The key is is not just your daily Bible reading. That's key. But it's when you can't you, meditate what you don't know. So you exactly. Know. Or you can, I can, Honestly, guys, I can read the Bible and be making a grocery list at the same time in my brain. I'm a woman. I'm doing like 10 times, 10 things at a time. So I'm going to have to actively and intentionally take that word and pull it apart and figure out what gaps in my life that word fills. Yeah. So, that's really okay. Good. So, Angel asked this on YouTube What part of the word do I speak to myself? Whatever part you need. <laughs> <laughs> so, like if you're fighting healing, or fighting sickness, sickness, well then you go to the Word and you find scriptures like by his stripes you were healed, who heals all our diseases, who heals all our infirmities. And so that, if you're fighting for prosperity, you go to scriptures that talk about prosperity. If you are feeling cursed and nothing works for you, you take the scriptures, you're blessed with all spiritual blessings. So uh, the Word is very specific. And if you meditate on prosperity scriptures, you probably aren't gonna get well. And if you're sick, you need to meditate on healing scripture. So that's the part of the word that you meditate on. And you know, there's a lot of, this is what like Carrie's teaching and my teaching, this is why our teaching can help you because if you just go through the word and just, you know, read through it over and over and over and wait until you can combine all of these scriptures, it could take you 20 or 30 years to cover what you could cover in us taking those scriptures from a whole lifetime and combining yeah. them and putting all of these scriptures towards healing, all of these scriptures towards prosperity or all of these scriptures towards family. And so you can benefit from other people who have taken those scriptures and applied them to one topic. So that's, that's, that's good. good. So kind of two questions. Um, uh, Anika on YouTube and then Kelly on Facebook. So Anika says this, what do I do when therapists speak unbelief over my nonverbal son? I don't want to offend them. And Kelly says, I'm a nurse. I'm around so many discussions on sickness, unbelief and vulgarity. I say to myself, not me and I don't agree with it, but I'm unable to say it because of the conversations are not with me, but around me, any advice? Well, first of all, about your son, you said you're unable to counter it because you don't want to be offensive. We've got a number of testimonies on our website, like Bud Boop I'm thinking about with his wife, Gina, and, and uh, Scott Peterson and his wife. But uh, the, the testimonies are that the doctors came in saying they won't live, they won't make it, and these people refuse to allow that. Like Bud Boop actually told the doctors, you do not come in here and say these things around my wife. She had a brain aneurysm, and I mean, she was out of it. And if you are worried about offending people, I don't think that you are going to be able to overcome those negative words. So if you're in a life and death situation, again, it's like I was saying, if I barely touch her, she doesn't have to respond much. But if they come saying, you're going to die, your son will never change, you've got to fight back with equal force and do that. Now, if you're in a situation where you're a nurse and you're overhearing somebody else, I just taught on this today, yeah out of the book of Proverbs that a person who meddles in something that isn't any of your business is like a person that picks up a dog by their ears. You're going to be bit. 
And so you need to have enough wisdom to understand, do I have authority in this situation? Is this my place to come in and counter this? And I'm just having to imagine because I've never been in that situation. But if I was a nurse or something like that and I was in a room and people were just speaking unbelief, mm -hmm. I, would, I would throw out something that, well, God could change this situation. And if the person just immediately throws up the barriers and stuff, well, then you can't force it on them and you probably get in trouble if you go in and start trying to preach to people that don't want to hear it. But you could just throw out a little morsel and if those people say, well, we're believers, do you think that God could heal this situation? Man, that, they just flung the door wide open. I'd drive a Mack truck through it and start sharing the word <laughs> with them. So I have a testimony on this. So my sister was dying of COVID. She had the ventilator on. And so it was just, we weren't going to accept it, you know, what the doctors were saying, what the daily reports were saying, what the daily figures and charts and flashing, beeping lights. You, you could see what was happening. Um, so we put on praise and worship music. We've got scriptures plastered all over the walls, you know, and, uh, you know, nurses or doctors may come in and they're, they're actually speaking over her. Oh, you, she's very bad, you know, like stuff. And they would leave and I'd look at, I'd look at my sister like, well, that was crud. You know, that's not true, right? And so I would, I would speak to my sister. You know, people are like, she's, she's in a coma. No, I'm speaking life over her. But it was interesting because of all that that was happening. Uh, one of the nurses who was a believer just would come and say, I get so encouraged when I come here. I get so, I get so strengthened. Even Dr. said, man, I'm, you know, I haven't been in church for a long time, but man, your playlist is so powerful. Like just different people started doing, and it was just us being vocal in our but faith. you stood up. We you stood. didn't just say, So that it. nurse, but that one nurse, she's a sweet young lady. She was out in the nurse's station and they were talking about Julie. Oh yeah. I mean, she's not going to live. It's so sad. I mean, we had pictures of her and her kids on the wall. So sad. She's a mom. She said, she just yelled at them. She will live. You stop talking Amen. death over her. And I was just like, thank you. That's what you got it. And so it was just, and she said, man, my faith has been encouraged by seeing what you guys are declaring. She's made, she said, it made me realize I have the ability to speak light Amen. in this environment. And I just, I just do not underestimate what your lifestyle Amen. will even, even inspire in someone else to be bold in their situation. Sometimes you think it's just about you, man. Stop being so self-centered. You standing up for truth can actually activate and change someone else's life. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and you cannot allow people to speak death over you. Words are powerful. I had a very good friend that's been a friend of mine for 30 something years and uh, he got COVID and went into the hospital and they put him on that redemosphere or however you say that and put him on a ventilator, which the stats are that 80% or more of people that go on a ventilator never come off. And the wife tried to get in to see him. She even got down on her knees and begged mm -hmm. and they just refused to allow her in to see him and he died. And then I've got another friend that he got COVID, he got put on that redemosphere and then he got put on a ventilator, but his wife, she was vicious and she got some of that ivermectin mm -hmm. and actually hid it in her bra and <laughs> snuck in and she was feeding him this ivermectin and the doctors found out about it and she threatened them. I will sue you if you keep me from coming in. And anyway, he lived. Yeah. And the difference was that one person gave in to the people that were in authority and allowed them to control the situation and the other one stood up and took control with their faith and their husband lived. Mm -hmm. So it's really critical. You've got to speak the truth. Yeah. You can do it in love. Ephesians 4, 15 says, but speak the truth in love. And so you can do it. I've had other people say, now look, doc, we know that you're doing your job and we aren't against you, but this is what we believe and we are not going to accept these things. So you can be as nice about it as you want to be, but you have to speak the truth. Yeah. Understand? I remember one of my sister's doctors got COVID and uh, the nurse told us, and she said, oh, by the way, he asked, he said, uh, could you tell Julie's family to be praying for me? Amen. <laughs> because I see what's happening over, over her. Amen. So just encourage you today, man, right so anyway, your heart. We hope that that helps you today. There is power in your mouth. I had a man come to me one time and he says, I know what you're saying is true, but I just don't have any power. 
And immediately I said, right here, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. You got power in your tongue it's to so counter good. the unbelief, but also to write things on your heart. Start using this weapon. Yeah. Your words are powerful. And hopefully that came across tonight. I believe that'll help you. If you need any prayer, we've got people standing by at our phones 24 hours a day, uh, 719-635-1111. And they can also give you a lot of material. I've got teaching on this. Carrie does too. And they know they have access to all this material and they could point you towards some things that would help yeah. you in this area. So yeah. check it out. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. And All right. we love you and praise God. We'll see you again next time. Check out our live Bible studies tomorrow, bright and early seven o'clock. Guys, God bless you. Amen. I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on April the 7th and 8th at Woodland Park, Colorado at our main facility in Karis Bible College. And we're going to have our musical God with us. We've done this many times and I tell you, it's powerful. It is awesome. My wife is in it, but even though we've got locals, it is Broadway quality. I promise you, you would love it. Remember, it's April the 7th through the 8th at our facility here in Woodland Park, Colorado, our God With Us musical. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 